What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mine Tech. So a few weeks ago I reached out to Ice Whale, which we worked with in the past on the Zima board, and I've always had interest in some of their other products. And I just said, hey, you got anything I could work with? And they said, sure. And they sent me out this Zima blade. This is an extra nick that I just added on to the side for the project. But they did send out this Zima blade and they said, sure, you know, you want to work with it? Let's go ahead. So that's what we did. And I built out a Proxmox server because I wanted to test this out to see if this is going to be the ultimate budget server for your home lab. It's a small server. It takes up very little space. It's pretty affordable. And the specs in it are pretty good. We'll just do a little overview. Uh, I know it's probably a little tricky to see, and I hope I'm not echoing with the mic, but we'll go over. We have the power, we have a USB 3, we have a gigabit NIC, and then we have the uh, mini display port. I, I had a brain fart for a second. Coming over here, we have two SATA ports, and then the, uh, the proprietary, I want to say it is, power adapter. And then over here on the side, we just have a PCI track, so you could add on like a NIC, or if you have maybe extra USB or whatever you might want to do. You could throw that right in there. I'm just going to put my nick back in because we'll see the products we can use later. Along with that, they also sent over the NAS kit. So the NAS kit comes with this nice uh, drive shelf that also can hold up the Zemo board on top. And then along with it, it comes with the needed cables like the power supply, the Y splitter for the SATA cables for the hard drives, the mini display ports HDMI as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM. So the one thing with this is that the memory is not soldered into the board. It can be purchased separate. So you could either get it with four, eight, or 16 gigs of memory, and you could purchase that on eBay, or you could buy it directly from Icewell and buy it whole as a kit. This all entail is the NAS kit. This is the Zima Blade 7700. It's a quad core uh, SBC. They also have this in a dual core if you're interested. But we're just going to go over this a little bit more. We're going to talk about the website. We're just going to head over to the website in a minute, and we're going to go over this, the full spec so we can just go over that in detail. So the idea of this project was to see what I could build out if this really will cater as a budget mini server that is pretty small form factor, right? And I built out a Proxmox server with some of the basic services that I think would be needed. And we're going to go into that after we go over the specs of the Zima Blade, and uh, we're going to see what my findings were. So stay tuned, and let's get right into this. Okay, so just to start off, I just wanted to come over to the Zima Blade site on Ice Whale's website. As you can see, you just have some info on the board, and then I'm just going to come over here to Specs. It comes pre-installed with COS OS. It's simple enough to change out, and it just gives you some of the other basic stuff that you could probably install. Honestly, this board's really compatible, and if you really want to run anything Linux-based or probably Windows, you could. Over here is just the two different models. Like I said, there's the 3760 and the 7700. The main difference that I see is that the 3760 is a dual core and this is a quad core. Other than that, you just have a little bit of different onboard graphics. They're all compatible with 16 gigs of DDR3 memory. They have 32 gigabytes of EMMC. And the only other thing that might vary is dependent on which CPU you get, your power might be a little bit higher because of the difference in CPUs. But these are older boards. They've actually been out for over a year. So there's plenty of review videos. And other than that, what I really want to focus on is what is this capable of doing? And that's what we're going to get right into now. So I did build out a Proxmox server and we're just going to log into that. And it looks like it came up. So I'm just going to log into the Proxmox server. And over here we can see some of the basic stuff that I built out. And then I'm just going to power on the rest of the machines so like i said i wanted to see what this server is really capable of i know it's a mini server it's got pretty good hardware in it and i really wanted to see what out of a basic home lab of you know the most common services that you're probably going to have running what can this handle and how can it run it so we're just going to start over here with homar so Homar was something that I built out of the Proxmox helper scripts. So all of these that have the blue tag on it were built out of the Proxmox helper scripts. And if you have any interest in that, I'll have a probably a card up in the corner or a link below. I have a video where I cover the Proxmox helper scripts and show how simple it is to install a lot of stuff on Proxmox. But that's a separate video. So Homer was just one of those things that I felt everybody's going to have in their home lab. They're probably going to have some sort of dashboard. So I'm going to open this up just so you can see how it looks but it's just another service that is running on this server. So over here we can see this is the Homer dashboard. 
pretty simple. Like I said, there's not a lot of services, so we're just wearing what we have. But I do have Pi Hole, and I have an open media vault running on this machine, so we can actually make it into a NAS. This is a NAS kit, so I did figure why not make it possible to have the NAS. So we do have open media vault, like I said, and Pi Hole. These are just some of the basic stuff I have on Homar right now because the other things just aren't going to really be in here yet. I do have OpenWRT, which I could add into here as well. I just didn't get around to it yet. Over here we can see I have Pi-Hole. There's not much really using it at the moment because I'm just using whatever on this server. But Pi-Hole is running out of an LXC container. I know I'm kind of jumping around, but again, this was made with the helper scripts, which is nice because it defaults to pretty low resources. It's only using half a gig of memory and about two gigs of storage. So pie hole is just kind of tucked away on the corner and not really eating up a lot of resources. And the same thing with Homar, it's using two gigs of memory, which it's not even using, it's using less than half a gig. And then we have about eight gigs of storage, which is fine. I can uh, work with that because I do have a one terabyte hard drive that I'm working with currently on this machine. And it is of course acceptable to have two hard drives. It, it supports it so you can add on to it as you go. I am using some refurbished hard drives I bought off of eBay. Unfortunately, it looks like they're not the best because I am seeing some issues on some of the machines with the read-write aspect. So we'll cover this more when we get over to the Windows machine that I'm running. But this is the only downfall so far I've seen running out of this server. But there's Homer. If we move over here, we already went over Pi Hole. The next thing I figured I would add to the server is Casa OS. It is something that comes default on the Zemo Blade. And I said, you know what, why not add this in? If you want some Docker containers, you could just easily throw them in the Cos OS machine. It has a really user-friendly UI, and I mean, it came from Icewell, why not? So we'll just open this up in a minute and we'll take a look. This also was installed with the Proxmox helper scripts, and by default gave it two cores of CPU, two gigs of memory, and eight gigs of storage. Low resources, and it's not really using it, so I'm not really stressed about the resource usage. And if we come over here, we do have our storage up here. You see, I found a new drive. We have our app store, so we can come in here and we can add in stuff. Now, I know there might be some comments of why didn't I, you know, do Pi Hole through Casa OS or some of the other stuff. And I just like doing it through the LXC containers. It helps keep everything separate and just works a little bit easier for me. But stuff that I would run out of this Casa OS machine, let's say, is Uptime Kuma. Maybe some of the media management tools that are in here. I believe WireGuard is in here. There's some DDNS stuff. That's stuff that I would have no problem running out of here. But even then, I could still run LXC containers and still have room. Cos OS was just something I threw in for a little extra and figured, you know, we have these apps. Why not use some of them through here? But that's Cos OS. That's one of the other machines that we ran on here. The next one we have is Open Media Vault. So like I said, this is the NAS kit for the Zemo Blade. So I figured I got to make a NAS out of it. I looked into True NAS, but True NAS uses just a little bit too much memory than I was willing to spare for this. So that's why I chose Open Media Vault. Open Media Vault can run on one core and two gigs of memory. And of course, if you have some more resources to spare, you can bump that up a little bit. To start, I figured why not use one core and two gigs because it's not really much going on with this at the moment. So we can go into this really quickly and we'll take a look actually when we get over to the Tiny 10 machine and I'll show you the Open Media Vault. But it was just the default config, really nothing special. I just set up a share, I set up the drive. I have worked with Open Media Vault in the past on the Raspberry Pi. If you're interested, I'll put a link down below that video. I could do a new tutorial with the updated version in Proxmox, which I might do because the setup's a little different in Proxmox compared to Raspberry Pi. Uh, next machine we're going to move over to is the Tiny10 machine. So if you're not familiar, this is just a Windows distro that's really stripped down to remove all the extra resource usage. So you can see over here I'm running it on two cores and four gigs of CPU. I'm just going to open up the console really quick and we'll log in and we can go take a look at this machine. So this is the first machine that I really started to see a little bit of a hiccup running off the server. It's the only graphical machine that I really run and I believe that the issue is that the hard drives are just a little too old. I mean, the data manufacturer on these drives are at least 10 years old and they've been refurbished. So it's kind of hard to say that these are solid hard drives to use for this project. But in the aspect of this being a budget server, it's what I want to do. They are HDDs. If I was to keep the server running, I might swap them over to two one terabyte SSDs just because the price of SSDs are dropping and it's just gonna be nice and quiet. 
Um, the other hiccup I have with this server right now is the spindle drives are really loud for this machine sitting on my desk. Um, I know it's it's stupid gripes, but it's just the simple stuff that is currently going on. Over here we have our Windows 10 machine. So this is running Tiny 10. It's nothing special and I really haven't used it too much other than some basic testing. But we can come over here and uh, you can see it's a little bit slow and I'm gonna equate that to the hard drives again, like I said. I know I keep saying it, but I believe that's what the issue is. So we'll just give it a second to open up and then we'll go check out some stuff. So we can see over here that Edge opened up and if we just do a quick Google search for Bar Mine Tech, here we go, we can see the channel, we can see some of the videos that we've done. So it is pretty responsive, it works pretty well, but if I was to probably daily drive this machine, I would probably bump up the specs a little bit and probably try to get some more reliable drives. But like I said, everything does work. And I know I mentioned about the Open Media Vault share that I put out. So we're just gonna wait for File Explorer to open up. And over here, I have it mounted. You can see I named it Sherry. And here's the folder that I made. There's nothing in it because I haven't worked with the NAS share, but it is working across the network and doing its thing. We'll just get out of this machine. The next thing that I did install, and this was the last thing that I felt was good for a good test on this Proxmox server, was an open WRT. I know that virtualizing a software-based router is the big move right now, and I figured why not throw one of these into the home lab. I have the two NICs on here with the add-on, and I figured why not, you know, the server could use a good router in here. So again, I used the Proxmox helper scripts. So by default, it gave it one core, and it looks like it gave it about a quarter of a gig of, mem of RAM. So it's pretty low. I might bump this up eventually. It is a really lightweight router that's gonna be running on here so we can just come over here really quick and i'll open it up now open wrt isn't something that i'm really familiar with because i haven't worked with it a lot in the past but it is running on the machine we can come over here we can see the onboard specs we can see our interfaces we have our firewall that we can come over here we can do our port forwarding rules or our traffic allowing we're capable of doing DHCP and DNS, and it has the capability for a TFTP server, so we might be working with this in the future for another project. But there was just our open WRT, and then of course I could route the traffic on this Proxmox server all through this, and then we can add it out to the regular network, or keep it everything separate, it doesn't matter. But this was the test Proxmox server that I built up, and honestly I'm really satisfied with it. I mean, we can come over here and look at the summary. The CPU usage is pretty fair, considering this is probably boot up times. The IO delay gets a little high at some points, but it's expected because of my hard drives that I'm using. Other than that, the load, everything that over here is pretty fair. We have our memory usage, which is maxed out around startup, it looks like. And then we have our actual usage, which is fine. The stats are pretty fair, our network traffic when everything's booting up because everything's going to be reaching out. So overall, it's really a solid server. I, just coming back over to the store really quick. So for this server to be running, this is the lower model, but for the, the 7700 for $120 without memory and hard drives, of course, this is a really solid board. It's a really fair size. It's not too big. I could tuck this away on the corner of my desk and not think about it. And even for the whole kit, so over here when it comes with a stick of memory and your power adapters, you're looking at 150 with a sale going on right now at the time of this video. And then even further, the NAS kit, which is what I worked with on this video, we're looking at $160 right now on sale. Again, at the time of this video being recorded, honestly, I think that this is a really good deal. Of course, you can go get mini PCs or buy stuff off of eBay, but we're not gonna be able to hit this form factor for what it's able to offer. And that's what I really like about the Zima blade. And I liked about the Zima board as well is for the size and what it could offer, it really hit the price point perfectly. I can't beat this price point for this form factor on any of my mini PCs that I run, especially with the hardware in it. So like I said, I'm really happy with this product and I'm really satisfied with the performance that it was able to put out. So that's the Zima blade. Um, like I said, I'm really happy with this product. I think that this makes a awesome budget home lab, especially at a really small form factor. The price point is really fair for what you're getting out of it. And even if you decide to get one of the kits that comes with the memory, all the cables and all that stuff, 
I think it's really worth it. I think it's a really good option. Like I was saying, I was going to purchase one of these last year. I just never got around to it, but I'm really glad that I have one now because this is an awesome little machine to work with. It really can help you build out a really sick server to use. And it doesn't just have to be Proxmox. I mean, if you want to just use this as a NAS, you can. If you want to use this as a little desktop, you can. I mean, the capabilities of this are endless. And that's what's great about these SPCs is that there's so much different stuff that you could do with it. So definitely make sure to go check out Ice Whale's website. I'll have links below. If so, if you're interested in getting one of these, you can. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. As always, I'll have all the links to the gear in my home lab down below. If you want to get any of the same gear that I use. I'll have a link to the Discord server. And other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.